Good morning, my name is Darlene Schumann and I'm with Salt Strong Alliance. We're out here today with DOT District 1 folks to look at the wave attenuator devices that were installed about a year and a half ago. And they're doing a snorkeling tour to look at the wildlife and the seagrasses and the crustaceans and the habitat that's been created just by the placement of these systems in the water. Sure, so I'm Brent Setchell, I'm with the Florida Department of Transportation, District 1 and I'm the district drainage design engineer. And so this product, you know, came about because of the issues that we we're having with erosion on the Skyway Fishing Pier Access Road. So we installed these, these WADs, these wave attenuation devices. There's two different sizes. They're, they're giant concrete pyramids. Uh, this size here is, is eight and a half foot tall. And further down in the second array, we have a 10 and a half foot tall array. These ones weigh 8,500 pounds. Those ones weigh 10,500 pounds and there's 844 of them placed in the water and they act as a breakwater to again protect the shoreline and offer seagrass mitigation. The, the WADs, the wave attenuation devices were installed in October of 23 and immediately after that we got Hurricane Adalia came through and provided kind of a glancing blow and we got lots of wave action and, th and they worked right away we saw the benefits of the WADs and then fast forward to 2024 both Hurricane Milton and Helene came through and during Hurricane Helene, we documented the water actually came up over the seawall, but we noticed in the video that the WAS were working as they were intended. The, they broke the waves out there, reduced that wave energy before they came up, and we didn't get hardly any of the damage that we got on the, um, the Skyway Fishing Pier Access Road, the parking area here, as well as I-275. There was no damage whatsoever, so they worked. It was, their, you know, it was a resilience project, and, and they provided that coastal resiliency that we were looking for. What I like about being out here today is it's kind of an initiation with uh, the District 1 folks to talk about projects that we can do with Salt Strong Alliance and the Salt Strong chapters to enhance what has already been done out here. Things like uh, planting and distributing clams along the wave attenuators, also planting some more seagrasses. Uh, I also envision cleanups along the shoreline here. There's a lot of debris that needs to be cleaned up, and also uh, our oyster catcher mats that um, would be a, a great place to put those on the back side of the wave attenuators because uh, oyster catcher mats can provide protection of the back side of those wave attenuators and also create habitat for oysters. So Brent, we talked at the uh, Wildlife Corridor uh, Summit yeah. and um, about doing some projects together. And that's why we're out here today, as a matter of fact. But one of the things that really resonated with me is the coastal corridor um, and how it ties into the Florida wildlife corridor, you know, and, and how, you know, it's almost like a ladder with two pieces and you have the rungs in between being the tributaries and the overland flow and stormwater. And t tell me kind of your thoughts about uh, developing that concept a little bit more. Sure, this is a this is a great project that um, you know kind of ties into that that corridor connection. And so, you know, if we can tie projects like this that you know provide you know not only coastal resiliency and seagrass habitat, but also opportunity for fisheries and um, you know even snorkeling. And so, I know down in the southeast they have a snorkeling um, park, if you will. And this would be really neat to kind of create these snorkeling parks, if you will, all the way up the East Coast. So we have, you know, we're in District 1 here and, and uh, covering the Southwest 12 counties. And then, you know, again, going north into District 7, just over the bridge, over the Skyway is, um, you know, be great to kind of carry this, this plan all the way up to kind of connect these different areas or opportunities for that, that corridor. To not only create the corridor and that whole concept, but also to be able to show it off to the public and have people come out and see it in real life the projects that we're doing I mean, with, the, with the snorkeling tours or kayak tours. These are fantastic projects. You know, again, this particular project has, you know, five benefits that were just making it so worthwhile. Obviously, we focused on the coastal resilience with this project and the seagrass growth, but we're also getting the water quality benefits of the oysters attaching themselves to the wads, proving the water quality. And then, you know, the, the wads themselves and the seagrass provide amazing fish habitat where we're getting the, the nurseries for the young fish can, you know, have a chance to grow up and and uh, you know get you get protection and then you know lastly it's you know the community benefit that you get from you know allowing people like us to be able to come out here and snorkel the day or to you know just fish out here or whatever it may be so there's an awesome benefit that provides for just this you know single project so we 
we can you know recreate this in multiple locations along the whole corridor like you're saying it'd be fantastic absolutely what i like about bringing the this project forward to this audience is we're going to do the same type of project in district 7 along courtney campbell causeway we're exploring wave attenuators right now to protect uh, around Binti Davis Beach on the south side of Courtney Campbell Causeway. So I, I like this being out here, seeing this project, explaining it all to you so you can see what's coming in the future uh, for projects and how Salt Strong Alliance will be involved with those also on the forefront of the involvement with those projects.